Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at something called slow flight, which is basically an exercise in controlling the aircraft at extremely low speeds. Uh, when you're doing private pilot training, this is one of those things that they kind of teach you pretty much right away, and really what they're trying to do is get you to understand the behavior of the airplane when you're traveling slow for something like a landing. So to do this, uh, we've come all the way here to uh, lovely Innsbruck. Uh, this is uh, L-O-W-I, this is Lima Oscar Whisk, India. Everybody recognizes this airport because it's absolutely uh, beautiful and incredibly scenic. It's got a little bit of altitude to it, and again, if you're looking for a fun time, this is a really neat place to fly. We're going to be flying the uh, Cessna 152 Aerobat today. Uh, of course, you can do this in any aircraft. The reason I picked the Aerobat is if I get myself into trouble, I feel like I'm going to have a slightly easier time recovering it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a standard takeoff, get ourselves a little bit of altitude, and uh, then we're going to kind of walk you guys through it. Go ahead and make sure all my settings are good. We're going to give this thing full power. Got to love the 152. Uh, for those of you who have not tried this one in VR, I'll give it a spin in VR. You simply will not believe how small this airplane is. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Oh boy. Yeah, we should be probably being a tank attention here, but you know, you can't always have that. Ah, this is such a neat area. By the way, there's an instrument approach that goes over those mountains right on my left, and it's a very, very sketchy, like six degree approach. It is just unbelievable. Now, we are a uh, an acrobatic plane, right? So we can do one of these. <laughs> Please don't do that at low altitude. <laughs> But again, it's just such a fun plane, such a fun plane. Okay, so what are we going to do? So we're going to fly the plane at the lowest controllable speed. Now, if you take a look at my handy dandy little instrument indicator right here, you'll see that my airspeed can go all the way down to, let's see here, I would call it 36 knots is my minimum speed. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce speed. We're going to get a little bit of altitude underneath us first. The aircraft speed all the way down to that speed, and we're going to fly it around as if we were on a mission. Now, some of you are saying, you know, can you slow flight to land on a runway? Uh, uh, you probably could, but um, my concern would be stalling, and that's kind of where I'm a little nervous. So usually when you practice this maneuver, you've already had a little bit of practice with stalls so that you're less likely. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get myself a little bit more altitude here. I like where I am now, but like I said, just a little tiny bit more just feels a little safer. Cool. All right. Here we go. So here's how to do this. So we're going to reduce our speed all the way down, drop that throttle, stick our flaps all the way down to whatever the landing equivalent is. Now, if you haven't tried this in an Airbus, it's actually kind of fun to do, too. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the speed of the aircraft all the way down to the bottom of the white line. I'm going to pull the nose up just a little bit. And that's the warning sound. I'm going to push my throttle forward just a little bit. A little bit more. Remember, big change is power. A little bit more than that. And there we go, right there. All right. So this aircraft is now traveling so slow, it's barely registering on my airspeed indicator. We are basically frozen in time here. You can tell you're doing this right, by the way, because it will not go away until you've completed the exercise. So we're actually traveling slower than we're supposed to be able to travel. But again, in the real plane, now you start getting airspeed errors when you're at this high of an angle of attack. So here's what you do when you do slow flight. You drop the plane down to the speed, and then, of course, what you do is you practice kind of working your way around and actually turning. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, turn this aircraft. Now, when you turn the plane at speeds like this, you're going to have a brand new set of problems. Whoop, we ran out of energy. Kind of let the come nose come down a little bit, kind of build up a little bit of energy. And we're just going to come right back up. I'm actually at full throttle at the moment, in case you're curious. Okay, there we go. So to turn the plane, what we're going to do is we're just going to simply and very, very gently tip the plane in the direction we want to go. Remember, a plane turns from its horizontal component of lift. So I'm going to go ahead and bank it about four and a half, five degrees maximum. If uh, you traveled any bit faster than this, you're simply not going to have enough lift to keep you up and also be able to turn you. Now, what makes this exercise super duper fun here is the fact that I'm basically sitting here, holding my nose up at 10 degrees, and I'm making the tightest donut this plane has ever made in the history of its plane. Now, if you feel the plane start to want to depart on you, uh, this is important. You're going to want to go ahead and make sure you keep the plane as coordinated as you can with the rudders. You can see down there by my turn indicator that I'm basically keeping this thing right in the center because if I start getting a little too slow, this is not going to go so well for me. So again, we just go ahead and just do basically little power donuts in the air here. Back the throttle up. If you feel the airplane starting to get very slow and you still have throttle to use, you're going to want to use major power changes in order to safely get the plane back under control. If you uh, do like a little er like you do when you're normally coming in for a landing kind of a thing, you're going to find all that energy is basically going to get wasted in something we like to call the region of reversal, where there's so much drag, adding power does nothing for you. It basically all gets inhaled by your drag. Starting to get a little fast, so I'm going to pull my throttle back just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and continue my nice gentle turn here. I'm probably cutting across the wind. Oh, I see my uh, airspeed is uh, starting to drift off and my vertical speed is starting to come down a little bit. So I do a big power change. And we're 
we're gonna do ourselves a nice big power change this way. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring myself back to center. Remember, as soon as you come back to center, all that lift you were using to turn you is now going to be converted into lift to hold you in the air. So the planes kind of get very, very slow again. But you can see I'm holding it pretty well. Okay, I noticed that I'm a little bit too uncoordinated. I'm gonna bring that back to the center. And now we're good to go. So what you would do in your early days of pilot training is you'd basically fly around like this for about 10 minutes doing the world's most gentle turns, just feeling what the plane is going to be like. Now there's another really subtle thing going on here. If you look out the window too much, if you look out the window of the plane, you're gonna notice the nose angle rough against the horizon is the exact same angle it's gonna have to be when you wanna land the plane. So one of the nice tricks here is you're actually practicing flaring and you don't actually realize what it is. Now, if you're a real hot shot, you can actually trim the plane so that it stays in this position and actually kind of acts like almost like a hovercraft. The other fun thing you can do is if the wind is strong enough, point the plane into the wind, and next thing you know, you're now traveling slower or even moving backwards. So it's always kind of fun to do something like that. Now, of course, the last thing we always like to do with slow flight is we like to convert our slow flight into a big nasty stall. So we're going to do a really, really, really dangerous stall here because we're going to intentionally um, basically overturn the plane. So I'm going to keep myself right back into the dead zone here. You can hear my uh, siren. <laughs> this is so much fun to practice. And I'm just going to turn back a little bit more. And I'm going to pull back. And there's the spin. So it's forward, pair. Go ahead and pull back up. Milk the flaps. And recover. <laughs> So it's one of those things where it's important that you have both sets of those skills pretty well honed down before you attempt to maneuver and do something like that. Now your flight instructor, of course, as soon as you start doing one of these things, he'll do this to your controls and kind of remind you, don't do that. All right, hopefully this video is uh, helpful. Again, if you want to have a lot of fun, try to do this maneuver in a jet. You'd be amazed how slow you can get that airplane uh, before the uh, trouble actually starts. Enjoy.